Hello! Welcome back to Frugal Spoon. We are making an American classic today. We are making apple pie with some modern twists. We will part cook the apples to save you time on the day of serving. The double dough will be egg and vodka based with a lattice crust. We will also make homemade whipped cream for the apple pie. And for a special treat, we'll be using some local artesian ice cream from Catton's Creamery. So get ready to make the flakiest crust pie, even if this is your first time baking a pie. My name is Ivan, and I make tasty small recipes for me and my crust pie. Apple pie is a great dessert and ready to satisfy your guests for all occasions. And let's not forget that smell. As realtors say, if you want to sell your house, then bake an apple pie before the open house. The ingredients to make your homemade apple pie are few. The cooking skills you need to make a successful homemade apple pie are easy to learn. The filling is part cooked, that is, partially cooked, so if your pie isn't burnt, then your pie should pass with flying colors. All you have to do is dive into working with dough and you'll be hooked for life. What we have are the basic ingredients for this apple pie, such as flour, sugar, salt, butter, and apples, and the kitchen tools you'll need. They are there so you can measure and manage the ingredients. So let's go through some of the ingredients. For the egg vodka pie dough, one half cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar, one half teaspoon or 2.7 grams of sea salt or table salt. You're gonna need two cups or 240 grams of all-purpose flour plus more for dusting. One quarter cup or 59 milliliters of ice cold vodka. One half cup or one stick or 113 grams of ice cold unsalted butter. And then you'll need two eggs. One egg will be for the pie crust and the second egg will be used to create an egg wash that we'll put on right before baking. One half cup or 100 grams of sugar for sprinkling for the top crust. Now that we have all the ingredients ready, let's start making the dough. Pour the salt into the measured sugar and mix it thoroughly. Now take your cold scrambled egg out of the refrigerator and pour it into your sugar mixture and mix it thoroughly. Let's prep the butter. Use a knife to dice one half cup of unsalted butter into dice size cubes. Mix the cold butter into the bowl of sugar. Mix the ingredients with a spatula to combine. Add the flour to the bowl. There will be chunks of butter in the flour. I want to break the chunks down a little to incorporate it further into the flour. So I will use my food turner to chop the butter into the flour. I am cutting the butter so I have a mix of large and small pieces of butter. Use one hand and squeeze the large pieces of butter down to the size of a quarter. If there are some small pieces, squeeze those down a little bit too. Use a spatula to remove flour from the side of the bowl and then keep folding the dough with your hand or the spatula. The dough should feel cold, lightly wet, and even sandy. The dough will be crumbly when you lightly squeeze it in your hand so it will fall apart. Drizzle in a teaspoon of vodka into the dough and mix it with your hand. And scrape the flour off the bowl to incorporate. Feel just how a teaspoon of liquid made a difference. Fold the flour more and you can feel the liquid spread throughout the dry ingredients. Now grab a handful of the flour mixture and lightly squeeze it into a shape in your hand. Now open your hand. If 60% stays together, then my dough has come together. You might think that this dough is too crumbly and powdery, but the liquid inside will solidify the dough more when we need the dough and wrap it and then chill it in the refrigerator. Sprinkle a tablespoon or less of flour onto your work surface and spread it around. Pour your cold crumbly dough out onto the work surface. Form the powdery flour dough into a pile and try to compress it further with both hands. Use a pastry scraper to scrape up all the flour dough into a pile and then try to compress it with both hands. 
Now lightly press down on the top of the flour bowl and then scoop more of the flour dough into the pile. Do this a couple of times before you even think about adding vodka or water. If the flour refuses to stay in the form that you created, then add a drop or two of vodka. A few drops may not seem like a lot, but this is where you become a baker. Try to remember the feeling of the dough and forget the recipe. The dough will feel like it barely wants to stay together, but any loose flour on your work surface will start to stick to your dough. Knead your dough by pressing down with the heel of your hand and roll the dough away from you. Reshape the dough ball into a loaf. The loaf may barely hold together, but that's fine. Divide the loaf into a 60% and 40% piece. The 60% piece will be the bottom crust, and the 40% piece will be the top crust. Wrap each piece in clear wrap, then flatten each piece with the palm of your hand into a thick disc like a hockey puck. Now we want to place the dough disc in the refrigerator for two hours. Refrigeration will allow the moisture in the dough to spread itself into the loose, dry flour. We are counting on that process to make a cohesive dough. Now the vodka pie dough is the exact same thing. All the exact same measurements except eliminate one egg. If you like this video, then don't forget to give us a likes up below with a thumbs up. And don't forget that subscribe button to the bottom right. Let's prepare our fillings. I like to cook my filling so I can taste it as it cooks, then adjust the flavors as it cooks. It also has the added benefit of reducing the liquid in the filling so your bottom crust doesn't get soggy. This reduces the boil over from juices during baking and that dreaded hollow pie dome. I have a large bowl of four large Granny Smith apples and four large Honey Crisp apples. Granny Smith apples are green on the tart side and Honey Crisp apples are red on the sweet side. Apples are great for pies during the winter since they are always available and they store well. Our local grocery has a wide variety of apples available and some of which I've never even heard of before. Two apples of each should weigh about three pounds and are sufficient for a level nine inch pot. The first pie filling is cinnamon apple, peel, quarter, and core, two green and two red apples, one at a time. The apples will brown in open air, so squeeze lemon juice on them as you cut them to reduce browning. Give them a good stir to cover the apples and lemon juice. Repeat the process with the remaining apples. Then add to the apples, one half cup sugar, one half teaspoon ground cinnamon, and then one half teaspoon nutmeg. Let's move on to our second filling. Our second pie will have a brown sugar apple filling. Mix all the ingredients together until it's well incorporated. The ingredients will start to look syrupy. Now both our fillings are ready to be cooked. I have two pans here set to medium temperature on the stove. Add a quarter cup of butter, that is, a half a stick of butter in each pan. Allow the butter to melt, and add each filling to their own pan. The apple that can be cooked with batter is to be added to the Fill the apple and allow the apple to steam. As a last minute addition, I'm adding some fresh cranberries for extra color and a little tartness. Oh, what did I do? I was gone just for a little bit. And I overcooked my cinnamon apples. The cinnamon apples are soft. Some of the apples are crunchy, but the filling looks burnt. The filling doesn't taste burnt, but this is not what I wanted. There must be a temperature difference on my stove since the brown sugar filling didn't burn and looks lighter than the cinnamon filling. Crap! Where are my car keys? I need more apples. If I'm not happy with my pie filling, then why should I expect my guests to be happy with it? Back to the table to make a new batch of cinnamon apple filling. So let's try this again. But this time, I came back from the store with some red delicious apples. No, that's their name, Red Delicious Apples, along with some Granny Smith. We'll just follow the same process before without burning. So here we go. 
go ahead and mix all this stuff up. Sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, apples, salt, butter, and the lemon. Okay, so we're here back at the stove. I am watching you like a hawk. I'm looking for a light glaze and the apple should still have a light crunch inside. If you like this video, then don't forget to give us a likes up below with a thumbs up and don't forget that subscribe button to the bottom right. Hey, you can also use raisins if you have a box of those laying around. Just add a couple in there. I'm looking for a light glaze on the apples and the apple should still have a little crunch inside. Sugar gets crazy hot, so you can use a toothpick to check for tenderness, but never put hot sugary apples into your mouth. Okay, this batch of cinnamon apples tastes good. The apples have a little bite, and they look perfect. Let's go back to the table. Let's take a look at the three fillings that I created. The two that I'm gonna use and the one that didn't turn out so well. Here's the brown sugar filling and the overly dark cinnamon filling. Yeah, the cinnamon is way too dark. Now here's the second cinnamon filling. But these two fillings will work for my two pies. The dark cinnamon filling doesn't taste burnt, so use it for toast in the morning. Let's move on to our pie crust by rolling out some dough, which is egg-based with vodka. I have a baker's mat with some chopped butter, egg wash with a tablespoon of vodka, sugar, AP flour in a bottle for dusting, pie pans and other tools. I will be using wax paper to roll out my dough. My wax paper is 12 inches wide, so I cut sheets in two feet lengths. Fold the wax paper in half and you'll have a 12 inch square folding piece of wax paper. Lightly drizzle the inside of your wax paper and on both sides of the bottom dough. The dough should feel cold and firm. Don't worry, the dough will soften quickly as we roll it flat. Place the dough on the center of the inside page of the wax paper. Fold the top page of the wax paper on top. The baker's mat really helps in centering the dough while kneading and providing a smooth surface to work on. Roll the dough starting from one third side towards you, two thirds to the other side. Now turn the wax paper and the dough 45 degrees and then repeat the process starting from one third side, moving on to the other two thirds side, and then going back and forth. If the dough seems lightly sticky, then add a little dusting of flour. If the dough seems too sticky because it's too moist, then return it back to the freezer or refrigerate so the dough can firm up. We are trying to roll the dough into a 12 inch disc that is 1 8 inch thick. Use the pie pan as a guide for measuring your dough if you don't have a baker's mat. The dough should extend an inch and a half beyond the top of the pie pan on all sides. Use one half teaspoon of butter to grease the bottom of your pie pans. This will make the bottom crust a little bit extra crispier and it will also make the pie easier to remove from the pie pan. Lightly fold the bottom crust in half and then in half again. Place the center fold corner in the middle of the buttered pie pan. Unfold the dough. Allow the dough to drape into the pan so it covers all the surfaces. But there should also be some extra pastry around the entire edge of the pan. Adjust the pie dough if necessary. If you don't have enough pastry, then use a little extra pastry from the other side that may have too much. No one will see the patch after the filling goes in. Lightly press down to remove any air pockets in the corners of the bottom of the pie pan. We're going to dot the bottom crust of this pie. That way steam has a way to escape. And that way you don't get the bubbling of the bottom crust. Repeat the process with the second disc, which will be the top, which is egg-based with vodka. The second disc, which is going to be the top, should still extend a half an inch to an inch beyond the top of the pie pan. Once the top disc is done in the wax paper, add it to the bottom disc that's sitting on your pie tray and take both and put them in the refrigerator so they can firm up. 
Fill the pie pan with one of the fillings. Spoon the apples evenly into the pie shell so the apples are no more than a quarter inch above the top of the pie pan. I like placing five or six pieces of butter on top of the apples before covering it with the top pastry. We will be making a very traditional lattice or weave for the top crust. Cut the top dough into even strips. Half inch strips or a little larger works fine and it doesn't have to be super accurate. Use a knife or a pizza wheel. Avoid stretching the dough. If you've never made a lattice top before or even if you have made a lattice top before, practice makes perfection. What I recommend is cutting a piece of paper towel into strips laying them down horizontally in front of you, one through five, and then take a piece of masking tape, cut it thin, and then tape it right down the middle. And then from there, you can practice your lattice. It doesn't take much to miss a weep. I recently made a lattice pie for a party, and one of the guests uh, said that they wanted to help me. And I said, just keep an eye on my lattice and make sure that I don't miss a weave. Sure enough, start talking. First thing you know, we miss a weave. <laughs> so practice it and uh, I think it'll all come out good. And even if it doesn't, it'll still taste good and then you can all have a big laugh around the table. See our next video on the steps to make a lattice crust. But until then, the steps will be down in the description below. Fold two or three inches of the bottom edge of the pie dough over the top lattice edge to hide the edges of the pie strips. Now continue this process all the way around the pie, moving in one direction only. When you get to the very end, just lightly pinch the overlap. But you can also pinch the pie all the way around the pie. Take two fingers and place it on the inside part of the crust and with another finger, press lightly from the outside of the crust, and that will give you a nice pinch. Now we're gonna cover the pie with an egg wash. Take one egg, scramble it, and add two teaspoons of vodka. Once the egg and the vodka are well incorporated together, use a brush, and then brush the entire top of your pie with that egg wash. Be generous with it. You don't have to use the, all the egg wash, just make sure all the dough is covered by the egg wash. Now sprinkle the top of the entire pie with a generous amount of granulated sugar. A half a cup should do. Your guests will love it. The rim or edge of the pie can be higher than the rest of the pie, so burning the edges is always a possibility. I always use a pie shield on the edge of the crust. The filling in our pie is par-cooked, so my focus is mostly on the crust. I use three inch strips of tin foil to wrap over the edge of the crust. Just wrap a section of the outer crust lightly so you don't deform the nice ridge you created earlier by pinching. And then slightly tuck the tin foil underneath the bottom of the ridge of the pie pan. Overlap another three inch piece and move your way around the pie until the entire outer crust is covered. Fold the outside bottom of the tin foil to complete the ring. When you're done, you should have a nice ring of tin foil going over your crust over the entire pie. So let's move on to the second pie. Butter your pan, roll out your dough, remove the air pockets, tuck your dough in, and add your filling. You put about five or six pieces of butter in there if you like. But now we're going to change up the top a little bit. I call it a crescent top. But you have to make sure the top dough is very cold because we're going to cut some holes into it. We will use a cookie cutter, or if you like, you can use a cup, and we will cut two inch holes evenly on the dough. Find the center spot on your dough and guesstimate where the center of that dough is on the pie pan. What we're going to do next is we're going to make four holes on the crust around that center point that it will still be inside the top crust. We want the holes to be equally distant apart and not touching. Take the rest of the dough, 
and then laid on top of your pie. Now place the discs that you cut and place them in between the holes that you cut. Now you'll have little crescent openings on top of your pies so you can see the apples below. Apply the egg wash of egg and vodka over the entire dough. Make sure everything's covered, the edges and the top. And then sprinkle a generous amount of sugar on top and on the edges of the crust. And this second pie is done. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. But today I'm trying something different. I'm baking two pies at the same time, so I will increase the oven temperature to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I expect the baking time will take longer, but I'm not sure what other surprises to expect. Place the pies on a baking pan. Once the oven is preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pie on the center rack of the oven. It's all about the crust at this point. Bake the pie for 20 to 25 minutes. I usually remove the pie shield and the top crust starts to turn a blonde color. After 30 minutes, I'm starting to get some browning on the top of the pie, which is good. So we're going to go ahead and take the tin foil off. Oh. Oops. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Careful because it is really hot. If you like this video, then don't forget to give us a like up below with a thumbs up. And don't forget that subscribe button to the bottom right. And that was protecting the outer crust from burning. Because the crust can be raised or whatever. But I find that the edge of the pan is thinner, so the edge gets a lot hotter than the rest of the pie pan. So we're going to let this continue on further until it gets nice and golden brown. Remove the pie from the oven and allow the pie to cool for at least an hour or two. I like placing my pies on a wire rack so they cool evenly on the top and the bottom. The cooling time will allow the apples and starches to set so the pies stay solid. So while the pies are cooling, let's make some whipped cream. The ingredients for whipping cream is simple. One cup heavy whipping cream, three tablespoons or a quarter cup of granulated sugar, one half teaspoon of vanilla extract, and that's optional. The tools you're gonna need is a large bowl and a hand mixer. Let's get started. Add one cup cold heavy whipping cream to a cold large bowl. One cup of heavy whipping cream will foam to almost two to three cups of whipped cream. Add a quarter cup of sugar and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract to the bowl. Attach your mixer blades onto your hand mixer and then place the blades into the bowl of heavy whipping cream. Now turn your hand mixer on its lowest speed. Move the bowl or the mixer so you can mix everything in the bowl. As the whipped cream thickens, then slowly increase the speed of the mixer blades. You can stop the blades while the blades are still in the mixer, and then you can taste the whipped cream to see if it needs more sugar. Whip the whipped cream until you have stiff peaks. The whipped cream should stick to the mixer blades and hold their shape without sagging. And now we have whipped cream for our pies. I want to remove the pies from the pan so we can get a good look at the bottom crust. The lattice pie has the brown sugar filling. The crescent pie has the cinnamon nutmeg filling. So I need to cut these pies in half and place them into new pans. I plan on giving half of each pie to our neighbor since she has been kind enough to share her baking techniques with me. I will plate each pie with our light whipped cream. <laughs> but an apple pie would not be complete without ice cream. We have ice cream from a local artesian ice cream maker. 
we have ice cream from Catton's Creamery in Fairbury. They were kind enough to provide two flavors that work marvelously with apple pie, vanilla honey and caramel crunch. Use the caramel crunch. Ice cream server, I am not. And here's our pie. Now it's complete. Here's our other pie. That is complete. Well, it's, it's really light. Now this one, this brown sugar pie, had uh, vodka replacing water. Let's try this ice cream. Oh, that's really refreshing. That vanilla honey, that's really good. And that whipped cream. You can't beat homemade whipped cream. There's nothing out of that you can buy that's pre-made or tastes like that. This pie here is the nutmeg and uh, cinnamon and the, the crust had vodka and egg. Let's see how this tastes. I know the filling on both of these are good because we made it beforehand the crust and this one is with the egg oh wow look at that Do you see how that just broke apart boy I could just eat this crust all by itself <laughs> that's really good oh oh yeah that's really good get some more of that. Look at that. Let's try it with the caramel crunch. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it was nice. I, I tasted it just a little bit before. I just had a little piece off of the sp serving spoon that I was uh, serving it out with. Yeah, you gotta lick those things. So you can either go with the egg and the vodka or the vodka by itself, replacing the water. Oh, that's good. Well, thank you guys for sticking around. Man, that's really good. Welcome back to Frugal Spoon. And we are here at Dave's Supermarket. And I'm looking at all the different apples here that we're gonna make our apple pie with. They have sweet mango, gala, Brayburn, Ray, Jazz, Super B. It's all over here. But you know what's really great about Fairbury is that everybody likes to cook. And I'm here with a couple of customers here at Dave's Supermarket. And uh, can you let us know your first name? Jan. Jan? Virginia. Virginia? Yes. Well, you know, you told me that you make apple pie. Are, do you use more than one apple or do you use several I, apples? I use more than one. Oh, you I, do? I, what, I like Jana, then I like uh, Gayla. Um, I, I mix apples in a pie. That's, Whatever I that's have the best is what I way. use. <laughs> so, and I, I like pies like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you like in your apple pie? I don't make my own, but I'm going to watch your show and figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> if you like this video, then don't forget to give us a like up below with a thumbs up, and don't forget that subscribe button to the bottom right. And also hit that little notification bell to pop right of your YouTube screen to be notified of new Frugal Spoon videos. Remember to visit FrugalSpoon.com to print this recipe and others. Thank you for stopping by. Come back soon. Have a great safe day. Adios amigos. Ivan out.